You're listening to the Witness History Podcast from the BBC World Service with me, Maria Elena Navas. Today, we're going back to Mexico City in 1971, where Roma, Alfonso Cuarón's critically acclaimed film, is based. We're zooming in on the social and political unrest that's captured in the background of the film, the so-called Corpus Christi Massacre. Cuarón doesn't identify the Corpus Christi Massacre in his film Roma, but it was a tragedy that sent shockwaves throughout Mexico. It happened when a paramilitary group trained by the government attacked a student demonstration and left about 120 people dead. I've been speaking to two students who participated in the fateful event. They started attacking us. They were armed. And some of them were positioned on top of buildings and were shooting at us. Some of them were coming out of the nearby underground station. Now we know it was a plan to stop the demonstration and that there were more than a thousand Alcones operating that day. The massacre was known locally as El Alconazo, or Hawk Strike, because the group that attacked the students were called Alcones, or Hawks. In 1971, Jesús Martín del Campo was a history student at Mexico's National Teacher Training College. I was trying to join the protest from one of the side streets when we started hearing shots. People were screaming and running, and then I saw the Alcones who started running after us. During the 1960s and 70s, Mexico was living through a period known as the Dirty War. One political party, the PRI, had had a monopoly on power since 1929 and dominated the country with a combination of political patronage, electoral fraud and the suppression of peasant and student activism. Things had come to a head in October 1968 with the Tlatelolco massacre when soldiers and police, disguised as civilians, opened fire on thousands of demonstrators, killing dozens. But by the 10th of June 1971, the day of the Corpus Christi Festival, thousands of students were back out on the streets of Mexico City, calling for democratic reforms. One of them was Rosa Maria Garza Marque, who was 19 years old at the time. I was in my first semester of anthropology, I had been involved in the student movement of 1968, so I was very engaged in the campaign for a more open democracy. It had been three years without student protests and without taking to the streets. Jesús Martín del Campo had been involved in 1968 too. I was involved in the student movement of 1968 and had been imprisoned because of it. Since most of the students were released in 1971, we decided to demonstrate to vindicate ourselves because we had been victims of repression. But we also wanted to take to the streets to say, we are still here. The students had gathered near the city centre. They intended to march to the Zócalo, the main square of Mexico City, but were met by a riot police blockade. Then a group of young men who were passing themselves off as students, the Alcones, began to attack. The march had just started, and after we walked 50 or 60 metres, the people who were at the front started running and shouting that the anti-riot police was there. We didn't know what was happening. Some of the Alcones came in civilian cars and vans and attacked the students with bamboo sticks. But when the students fought back, they began to shoot with pistols and high-caliber rifles, while the students tried unsuccessfully to hide. There were shots and shouting. I couldn't really see what was happening, but when I moved back towards the wall, I could see little pieces of brick falling down, and I figured it was the result of gunshots. Then the college door opened and we ran inside, but people started falling. We realised they were shooting at us. We learnt later that there were snipers on top of the buildings. According to Rosa Maria Garza, some of the attackers were even hidden in the ambulances that had arrived to rescue the injured. The ambulance doors opened and the Alconas started to rush out. They were carrying bamboo sticks and yelling battle cries. There were eight or nine of them. I didn't see anything else, I just started running. 
Three decades later, in a judicial inquiry opened by Vicente Fox, the first president in 70 years not to belong to the PRI, it was revealed that during the Corpus Christi massacre, the police did not intervene because they had been ordered not to. Jesus Martín del Campo says that cars and vans gave extra weapons and support to the paramilitaries. He was trying to hide from the attackers, but he didn't know what had happened to his 20-year-old brother, who had also gone to the demonstration. We ran. Some of us entered houses when people led us in to hide. But then I was really worried about my brother, so I went out to look for him. I knew who was in the front rows of the demonstration, so I had this feeling that something could have happened to him. The injured were taken to a nearby hospital, but the Alcones reached the hospital and continued their attack. That night, Jesus Martín del Campo found out that his brother had died during the attack. A friend of my brother, who stayed with him, told us he had been shot from above. He was badly injured and carried to a nearby house where he died. The final death toll approached 120 people, but the authorities at the time claimed that only nine had been killed during the confrontation. According to Rosa Maria Garza, who also witnessed the death of a classmate, many people were told not to report the deaths or injuries. We told his mother that she should report his killing to the authorities, and also the fact that it took several days to find and retrieve his body. But she told us, no, I can't do that, because I was threatened and I have other children to take care of. We asked her who had threatened her, and she said, the police. It took many years to find out what had really happened on the 10th of June. During the Vicente Fox inquiry in 2002, Members of the Alcones admitted they'd been recruited and trained by the military and that they were funded by the Mexico City government. They said they'd been told to initiate violence so that the police and military could claim they'd been provoked. Their plan was to try to pass off as students, to make believe that it was a clash among student groups, but they were military trained. And we found out later how they trained, who trained them, and who paid for it. The government at the time never formally acknowledged the massacre, and no one has ever been convicted in connection with the killings. The then-president, Luis Echeverria, always denied the Alcones even existed. It was said that the students were responsible for the confrontation. The president, Luis Echeverria, said that everything that was said about the Alcones was a myth. They denied it all and blame the students for everything that happened. In 2006, a court of appeal ruled that there was enough evidence to support genocide charges against the former president, Luis Echeverria, in connection with the Corpus Christi massacre. And he was put under house arrest. But three years later, he was cleared of criminal responsibility. To this day, Mexicans are still looking for justice. All those years, we were never heard. There was no opportunity to start an investigation. Then, an inquiry was opened, and Echeverria was charged. But after that, justice was denied again. They said it was a state crime, but there were no criminals to charge.